Andy Katz here for March Madness and NCAA.com with a look at Syracuse's dream player under Jim Beheim. I gave him 10 categories. He gave me a player that fits the criteria for each category. And Syracuse fans, I think there's going to be a pretty big debate about his choices. Well, it's hard not to start with Pearl Washington. This is vintage Pearl Washington. He hasn't had that many opportunities on the fast break, but when he gets it on the fast break, there's none better in college basketball. Well, Pearl coming in changed the history of the Big East, and along with Patrick and Chris Mullen, catapulted the league into the top league in the country uh, within a year or two uh, of its formation, which uh, was something that no one thought was possible to do. You know, really, uh, it's hard to beat Jerry McNamara. We didn't count out, uh, count out the number of game winners, but he probably made seven or eight game winners. He made them, I think, easily the most clutch shots. So we, we've had some, obviously, great players, but just for guys that have made big, big shots in games, uh, I don't think anybody's uh, close to what, uh, what Jerry did. I mean, I started out way back with Tony Red Bruin, who could uh, jump over the building, really, and, and go get balls, uh, you know, at six foot four. And the tip control by Tony Bruin. Tony was uh, a really, really athletic type player and, uh, and good player. So we had to get him. Preston Schumber, who really could shoot the ball at 6'7", so uh, we've been very fortunate with guys shooting the basketball. And simply lost it to Griffin. Schumber from deep. He's a difference maker, and he has 14. He's a quiet assassin offensively. <laughs> You're going to come out, Anthony, there. Yes, There's, I knew it. We've had a lot of guys, huh? guys that could get buckets, but... Uh, he could make the three, pull up, or get to the basket. Offensive rebound. Carmelo Anthony doing a little bit of everything, and he's doing it close to the basket. And uh, and it, when you really, it's remarkable when you realize he was here one year, I mean, just one year. So uh, he had a huge impact when he was here, and he's continued to give back uh, all these years, and it's incredible. You know, really, uh, it's a great story. Well, I think you have to look at Tom Thomas, who was, you know, drafted ninth in the NBA, led the Big East and block shots and up there and rebounding. His career, almost four per game. He sends more out of town than Parcel Post. <laughs> he certainly was a guy that you'd have to, uh, you know, really look at in terms of uh, protect the basket type of defenders. Turnover. Because of Thomas, right? I mean, he he may lead the country in hurries. Well, the best rebounder was Derek Coleman. He led the country in rebounding. He led the NCAA basketball in rebounding until I think Tim Duncan came along. He was a tremendous rebounder. You know, I, he had, I think, 18 or 20 rebounds in the national championship game. And just a, an amazing rebounder, great hands. If he could get his hand on the ball, he got it. He brought it in. He's by far the best rebounder that I've ever coached. Freshman. My one is Josh Pace, who was our sixth, seventh man on our national championship team. Could rebound a little bit, he could score, he could play, he defended, he made steals, a uh, good passer. He's a guy that kept the team together and wasn't a primary guy. He's really the guy that comes to mind the most of anybody. Tyler Ennis might have been one of the smartest point guards. I mean, he, you know, Pearl and Sherman had unbelievable physical talents. And Tyler Ennis was quick and, you know, smart, but, you know, moved well, but he didn't have that kind of physical, to, but he made the right plays all the time. He, he kind of sticks out as, uh, you know, just a smart, 
smart basketball player that knew exactly how to get the ball to people and make plays. And then Sherman being able to take over for Pearl and do the, almost the exact same stats, lead the league in assists, score, uh, steals. I mean, you just can't look at two better point guards than that. Very few point guards make all league three years in a row. Pearl was only eligible three years. He was three years, made it all three. Sherman, of course, played behind Pearl for one, and then he made it three straight years. So, uh, Two unique players and uh, two, two of the all-time best point guards, I think, in college basketball. Comes away with it. Would you believe the move? The defender. He looks at the defender. Thinks like he's going behind the back, and you see Hellman 